I'm R.C. Buford, um, one of the directors of the basketball camp here at the Aspen Basketball Camp. When uh, Greg Popovich and Bruce Lindbergh and myself started putting together ideas about the camp, we really wanted to stress basketball fundamentals and uh, skills, but we also wanted to take things a little deeper and, and uh, stress people skills and, and teach these, these campers a little bit about what it's like like in the real world and, and what they're going to face as they grow up and how they what the things they have to do to mature and so every day we've tried to, to stress uh, in a period a little lecture period to, uh, to them a different message and probably one of the more moving experiences we had this week was uh, presented by the man sitting next to me it's Mike Granderson from Thornton High School in Denver I just I, I guess I'm gonna let Mike explain to you a little, a little bit about what his background is and what what he overcame to to uh, to get where he is today and, and it really meant a lot to the kids and the people that listened. To him. Well, thank you first of all for the opportunity to be here. Uh, it's not every day that you have an opportunity to go to Aspen and have a great accommodations. Uh, it's been great. It's been a great experience. I want to start everything off by thanking you for that. I. Um, what basketball has meant to me, more than anything else, it's allowed me the opportunity to, uh, to meet new people, to have new experiences. I grew up in a small town in Tennessee. Um, people probably think of Tennessee, they think of Memphis, and they think of Elvis Presley. A long way from uh, Graceland. I grew up in a rural community called Arlington, Tennessee, um, as a sharecropper. Uh, Sharecropper, quick history lesson is uh, you get half of what you raise. We had 20 acres of land and uh, we could keep whatever we could raise on 10 acres of it. The other 10 went to the person that owned the land. Uh, I'm a strong believer that it's not uh, where you start from but, but, but what you do along the way. It's not even necessarily where you finish. That's probably an old cliche, it's not how you start but how you finish. It's what you do and what you acquire along the way the experiences you have, uh, the, the time you share. Uh, starting from that basic background, I, uh, I had to find a way to get out of the situation I was in. And uh, my mother, as most um, people will tell you, had a large influence on my life. And uh, she said, I want you to go further. I want you to do more. Um, I want you to be happy. And I think all mothers wish that for their children. I, uh, I was fortunate. God smiled on me, he made me big. Uh, the first time I, I knew that I could use my size to my advantage was when uh, a, a farmer offered to pay me adult wages to, uh, to work in the field. And uh, coming from a situation where a family, we needed money, we needed things. My mother said no. It was, you know, and then we needed the money, $4 a day to chop cotton. And uh, for children, you'd get $2.50 but he offered me four dollars because I was so big. And she said, no, that's not your future. That's not what this is about. Uh, you go play basketball. And uh, such that it was, I explained the first, to the camp that the first basketball wasn't really a basketball. It was a rubber playground ball that had been discarded. discarded. And uh, I sold it out, we put some straw in it, we put some clothes inside of it and I kind of made a basketball. It wouldn't bounce, but uh, it was the closest thing I had to a basketball. And uh, I used that in a bicycle rim that I took the spokes out of, and I nailed it up on a, against a tree, about yay high, as they say. And uh, probably the reason my shot is so flat now. <laughs> but, uh, but I had a lot of fun with that. I had a lot of positive experiences with that. There were times when people would, would, would come by and they'd see me out there all day, half the night, and they uh, the boy's crazy, the boy's crazy. But uh, my mom had faith in me, she stuck with me, and uh, I got through it. Uh, the short part of it is that it's not for the glory of the individual, but for the dedication that you have in life. And if I can clarify that a little bit. For me, it wasn't that I wanted to be good at basketball, but it was that I wanted to be good at something. I needed to have something that I was good at, something that belonged to me. If, the, if it wasn't on in our own home, we never did. 
or owning our own land or anything else. I had to find something, something that I could to call my own. That was my talent. That was my ability. And uh, with that ability, with that talent, I uh, earned a, a college scholarship. And uh, that was the start. That got me out of that community. They got me out of the sharecropping and into this century. Uh, from there, it's been, a, it's, been a, it's been an adventure. How can you go from sharecropping to Aspen, Colorado? Uh, I started school, as I told them earlier, I started school when I was seventh grade because up until that point, uh, desegregation roughly 1960s, it didn't really happen in 1960. It didn't happen until mid-70s in the South. So we, did, we had a, kind of like a migrant school where parents would teach their kids. We had the Bible. We learned to read by reading the Bible. And you think, well, this guy's not that old. Uh, that's the way it was then. Uh, but from that, from that seventh grade beginning, I have a bachelor's degree. I have 31 hours toward my master's degree. Uh, I'm a full-time professional teacher. Um, and my summers and my winters I feel doing exactly what I want. Working with young people, being with my family, loving life. That's pretty much my story. Thanks, Mike.